What's up, folks? Coming live from Broad Street South tonight. We got Frank Close on from 97.3 ESPN covering the Phillies. And after him will be Jordan Spector from Jordan Spector Art. How's everybody doing tonight? I'm filling in for Angel. Angel's behind the scenes. Our national correspondent, Ryan F., is here with me co-hosting tonight. Our beat writer, Nicholas Lisi, is on a well-deserved vacation. Hope you're out there, Nick, having a good time. Checking out San Fran, the Giants game out there. Anyway, what's up, folks? We're two days away from the Nick Sirianni. First Eagles game ever, the Jalen Hurts ever to kick off in two days. The Phil, the fighting Phils, eight in a row. We got Nolan Scherzer going at it tonight. The Dodgers are in town. It's a big series. Got a little, a lot of Philly flavor tonight. We're going to jump right into the fighting Phils a little Eagles later. How's everybody doing? First, we want to bring on. Frank Close of uh, 97.5. He's also the uh, Power co-host with Jeff Mosher of the Power Blue podcast. Um, first, let's bring in our national correspondent, Ryan Neff. Ryan, how are you? Fuge, my man. Uh, I'm Ryan Neff. It's great to be with you this evening. It's great that we have these two guests on. A little bit of art, a little bit of life. A little bit of entertainment, and we can talk to your buddy Frank about the Phillies. I know everybody's on their high horse right now. Yeah, they won eight in a row. Epity, 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 ep. That's all I'm hearing. So, but before we bring him on, Angel, I know he's sitting back there. That's Fuge. I'm Ryan Neff. This is Broad Street South Sports Life Entertainment. So here, we are. so here we are, folks. Ryan and myself hosting the show, Angel behind the scenes, and Nick on a vacation. First, we want to bring in Frank Close of, again, the Powder Blue podcast and the Phillies beat writer for 90, ESPN 97.3. Frank, how are you tonight? Good, great. How are you? Hey, Frank. Oh, good, thanks. Up, guys? up for some Phillies, Phillies fever in the Delaware Valley. Now they're playing pretty well, so good night to do it. One hell of a matchup tonight, Scherzer and Aaron all going head to head. Couldn't ask for a better matchup. Yeah, two of the three Cy Young candidates a few years ago. I mean, Nola hasn't been the same this year, but Scherzer, Scherzer has been Scherzer. So we'll see how he does uh, coming from the West Coast this time. Well, playing with a playoff contender, you know, the Dodgers are right in the home with that division and the wild card. Um, first, want to jump into it. Uh, as far as, as far as the Phillies, Braves, and Mets, who do you think 11, 10, 11 days later, who, who had the best, who made the best trades out of all three teams right now in the NL East? The Mets, I didn't think do it, did enough. Uh, they traded for Javi Baez, and Baez wasn't having a great year. He was kind of defensively a mess. Um, his bat hasn't been what it has been in the past. Now, normally he's one of the pro prolific hitters in the National League. Instead, he's he's been less than, uh, and he was their solution to, to kind of fill in for Frankie Lindor, uh, but they're still without Lindor, so and I think he's not quite the player that Lindor is. Now, they'll look better when they have both of them, whenever that happens to be, uh, but, but they're also without their ace pitcher in Jacob deGrom, and can't replace Jacob deGrom. Uh, their answer to that was, was Rich over the hill. I mean, uh, sorry, Rich Hill. Uh, who's 42 years old, and uh, you can't expect him to be what he used to be either. So uh, to me, the Mets, I, I think the Mets are going to be disappearing from playoff contention. I don't see them being back in this thing ever again. I think their upcoming series against the Giants and Braves and then Giants, excuse me, Giants and Dodgers and Giants again will knock them out of contention. And, and so I think it kind of comes down to the Phillies and the Braves at this point, and the Braves – uh, they had a really nice outfield. They had Ronald Acuna Jr., perhaps one of the top two or three players in the game. And he goes out for the year. Their left fielder gets arrested. And so they answered that with, with a couple outfield trades and kind of remade their whole outfield. They're, they're still not as good as they were before the arrest and injury. 
but they, I think they've improved to the point where they can maybe hang in uh, a little bit with the Phillies. So I think this is a two-team race. I think uh, the Phillies adding adding a starting pitcher that's a very reliable six innings every single time out in Kyle Gibson is going to be a, a difference maker. And then Ian Kennedy allowed Ranger Suarez to go back to the starting rotation, where which he would have made last year if it wasn't for him getting COVID. So uh, it's it's definitely if the Phillies are improved, I think, in, in the areas that they needed most. I think the other two teams still have a lot of questions. Braves, their pitching has taken a blow with a lot of in- injuries. So I don't see them uh, perhaps dominating, but I think the Braves are the biggest threat right now. As far well, Frank, as I'm, no, no, go ahead, no, but, no, I was going to say, Frank, you know, Phillies obviously have the easiest schedule the rest of the way going down the stretch. I mean, you, you take a look at their schedule as opposed to the Mets or the Braves. You know, I try to tell these guys before the year started, even though the Braves got off to a slow start, I thought in the end, at some point during the season, the Braves are going to catch fire, whether it's at the end of August, whether it's September. I just think they're going to have a stretch just like the Phillies are now. But when you look at the Phillies' schedule and you, you look at the way the Phillies are built now, do you think that they're going to hang with the Braves all the way down to the final week? Or do you see the Braves at some point maybe just edging away and pulling away a little bit? You know, I, everybody says the Phillies had the best schedule coming down the stretch. I think the Braves schedule is relatively comparable. Uh, you know, they play a lot of the same teams. Um, the Phillies might have an edge over a series or two if you're going to just go strictly by records. But as, as you probably are aware, you know, some of the quote-unquote good teams, you know, if the Phillies catch them and they're pitching Zach Wheeler, that's a lot different than the Braves catching them and they don't have Charlie Morton or, or even Max Freed, right? So a lot of times it's going to be luck. But so I, overall, I, I tend to think that the schedules are rather comparable. So my eyes really are on that second to last series of the season. Phillies are in Atlanta, three games. I think those three games could determine who wins this uh, this division. Because, you know, if, if, even if the Phillies have a, have a two-game lead and they show up in Atlanta then, uh, that could go either way, right? And then the Phillies would, would then close against the Marlins after that. But I see that, and I think the Braves have the Nats. I'm not totally sure off the top of my head, but um, but I think I think that could be an issue there that the the second to last series could end up determining it. If one team sweeps, that could you know that could make all the difference in the world. So I think I, I see this kind of going down to the wire. Frank, do you think any of the, with the Phillies adding Gibson and Ranger Suarez to the bullpen, they got the horses to go deep, winning the division? I, they need Zach Eflin back. That, that's something I think is really, really important. You know, the Phillies were close to acquiring a second starter in Tyler Anderson from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, that deal did not go through. You know, there are all kinds of conspiracy theories around that about Ben Sherrington's relationship with his old boss, Dave Dombrowski, but – at the end, the, the Pirates and Phillies made a trade anyway. One of the players that that the Pirates wanted, they, they traded a, a nice AAA promising reliever for. So they, they did complete a deal. It's just not the one that helps them right now. I'd feel a lot better if they had Tyler Anderson and Kyle Gibson and Ranger Suarez able to give you some some back end of the bullpen. But instead, you know, they, they, they did improve. They did get somebody that can – Really, uh, you know, I'm a big Ranger Suarez fan. I'll just say that. You know, I, I think that he's going to take a while to, to, to build up to the point where he can give you five, six innings. That's that's the one downside here. Um, but at the same time, I you know, there were a couple games I watched where I thought, oh, man, it'd be really great to have Ranger Suarez in this situation a couple innings to go and the Phillies with a, with a, with a tight lead. So uh, overall, I think that that does really do – really does improve the team. Certainly – Kyle Gibson over Spencer Howard is a big difference. You know, Howard, who seems to just fall off the face of the earth when he gets to inning three. Now, he remains a promising pitcher. It re- he remains somebody that could figure it out. It remains somebody that, that could end up looking like a really nice player someday. Uh, but right now, Kyle Gibson is giving them way more than Spencer Howard. And when you consider that the Phillies had to, to suffer through a Spencer Howard start, a Vince Velasquez start, and a Chase Anderson slash Matt Moore pick one start, uh, you know, three times out of five in the rotation. Well, if you, if you subtract two of them and then all of a sudden you have Kyle Gibson 
and you have Ranger Suarez, you feel a lot better about your chances than you did before making those deals. So, uh, but of course, Zach Eflin's a wild card. You know, he, he you know, they, they, did, they didn't land Tyler Anderson, so Eflin's spot is going to be this fifth spot, whatever he gets better. Uh, it sounded like it was a little bit more complicated, his injury, before than when he hit the injured list. So at this point, you need to make sure that that, that you hang in there until uh, Eflin gets back. And I think I think you feel a lot better about doing so with two different starters than the Velasquez and Howard that you got the last several weeks. The question I don't understand is how the Dodgers throw a million dollars at Cole Hamels, which is peanuts. Why didn't the Phillies make a run in it? You know, the tough thing about that is, you know, and I, I kind of said he wasn't a fit even before you got to the trade deadline. And the reason why was that the Phillies needed to spend their money on pitching that can help them right away. Uh, Cole Hamels remains a wild card. Uh, Cole Hamels was basically asking the teams that signed him to guarantee him a spot in the starting rotation when he was ready. Well, right now, if Eflin comes back, you have five starters, and you don't necessarily want to like remove them from the starting rotation just to throw in a Cole Hamels, who, quite honestly, is a question mark at this point in his career. You know, he threw, what, three and two-thirds innings last season, immediately got hurt. Uh, that was after overcoming a separate injury that he had in spring training. So he's really a wild card. Uh, he could help the Dodgers. He might not help the Dodgers. But I tend to think that the, the Phillies needed a little bit more certainty. So they spent their money on Kyle Gibson and Ian Kennedy and, and, and Freddie Galvis as well. So I think the Phillies would have given Hamels a shot had he, had, he um, had nowhere else to go and was willing to – be more flexible if, if you said, hey, we'll sign you, we'll send you on the rehab assignments, and hey, maybe you'll get a spot. But I, I think Hamels at this point in his career too, I actually predicted he would go to the West Coast because he's a San Diego native. He's kind of always said he's, he would love to pitch there someday. And right now, this is probably it for Cole Hamels, and the only thing he wants before he quits is to have another World Series ring. And the Dodgers probably give him the best shot of any team. I mean, let's face it, they're probably the World Series favorites, right? I mean, would you guys agree? You know, so I think Hamels, uh, I think Hamels is trying to go for what he thinks is the surest ring and the surest opportunity. So that combination there, I just think the Phillies couldn't give him. You know, th that's the problem when you have these sentimental connections to a player, right? You, you, you know, you, you almost have to do too much to kind of, um, kind of appease him. You know what I mean? Like, or you're afraid of offending. You know, uh, Mike Schmidt back in the day, he was looking to be a major league manager. He managed for Clearwater a little bit, and the Phillies didn't let him go any higher. And and basically, I, if I remember correctly, the late Dave Montgomery, the explanation he gave to Schmidt as to why they weren't really considering him for more, he's like, "Well, if we hire you, then we have to fire you." <laughs> so, um, if Cole Hamels comes up and is bad, what are you going to do? Release him ahead of the play? It could, it could be way way worse if you brought somebody like that back and he just doesn't have it. So Frank, we got a quick, we got a question from, uh, Bill McManus. One of our, look, Bill McManus with all the height with Abdel playing on the team, how do you view his play up till now? And do you believe all the crap with him is over or do we still have to worry about him? I'm sorry. I missed the name. Who was the, uh, Odubel Herrera. Odubel Herrera. Odubel Herrera. I don't think much of Odubel Herrera's play. I never did. Um, I think he, you know, your center fielder, you should have, he should have more of a, well, put it this way. He doesn't have, he doesn't have an arm to play defense. Now, some of the metrics say he can get the balls, which maybe he can, but he doesn't have an arm. And I think that that has cost them greatly. And at the end of the day, he's hitting 245. So do you want your, do you want a player that's supposed to be an impact player earning all that money, hitting better than 245? Of course. So I, I really don't think he's, he's much of anything. I think the Phillies have been forced to play him because of injuries. And, you know, when the season started, he basically was fifth in line for that job. So you needed Scott Kingery, Adam Hastley, Mickey Moniak, and then I'm, I'm even – who am I forgetting? But, but, like, you know, all these players had to fail in order for him to get a shot at center field. And all they, they all failed. And so when, when that happens, here he is. And – uh People keep getting hurt, so he keeps getting a shot. He already lost the center field job. Uh, so since Andrew McCutcheon's out, they've been stuffing him in left because they don't really have anybody else. Uh, I think some of those some of those bats are going to go to Mickey Moniak 
Now the Mickey Moniak has been recalled today. Uh, so Mickey Moniak playing very, very well in the month of July and August uh, down in AAA. So, um, yeah, I think I think Odubel Herrera is here until the year's over, and then then you'll never see him again. I don't I don't think he brings a lot to this team, aside from all his other issues, right? We can go on and on about those, but Odubel Herrera, the baseball player, I think is just not performing at a level that's that's acceptable. You know, when you consider the average OPS in the league is. Uh, I forget what the number is off the top of my head, but he's below the average. And that average includes all the pitchers hitting, right? So you, you need more than that. So I think the Phillies are very much looking forward to his salary leaving the team so they can sign somebody else. Would you say the additions of Freddie Gallus and, and Kennedy, are you comfortable with both of those acquisitions? I am. You know, Ian Kennedy is a veteran. I think I think much was made of Ian Kennedy at the beginning because he gave up a few home runs uh, in his first few appearances. But but from my perspective, he just started going after the hitters. He was not trying to mess around, right? You know, if you come in with a lead, go after the, the batter. Uh, he's a veteran, been around this game a long time, a former 21-game winner in the major leagues, once upon a time traded for Max Scherzer, right? So that's, uh, you know, he's got a pretty good track record in his career and he, he knows what he's doing. And so um, so I understand that, that in terms of Kennedy, it r- rattled people a little bit um, just be, just from those home runs. But, you know, if you're coming in with the, with the lead, just get the hitters out. And if that means you throw the ball over the plate and there's a chance somebody hits it, fine. Uh, but at the end of the day, he's not giving up any leads. So I, I think Kennedy is a very important uh, addition. And in terms of Freddie Galvis, you know, he's kind of the veteran guy who's played with all the former – Phillies winners. He's played with Roy Halladay. He's played with Cliff Lee. He's played with Ryan Howard, Jay Sudley, Jimmy Rollins, Chooch. He's the kind of guy that can sort of be the bridge to the past. And then a lot of the other Phillies players that, that maybe never, in fact, there's a great piece today by Matt Gelb in The Athletic. The people that never, ever faced him or never played with him, uh, they, they recognize that, hey, this, this guy's somebody special. They seem to be looking up to him. He's been offering really good advice from his experience. And he hasn't even taken the field yet. So, uh, but when he does, I think the Phillies would love on a Kyle Gibson start. Kyle Gibson, somebody who pitches uh, to a lot of ground ball contact. They would love to have Ron Torres and Freddie Galvis make up the left side of the infield on days like that. And, you know, Alec Bohm, who's been very quietly doing pretty well with his bat the last couple of years, uh, excuse me, last couple of months, he's been very loud with his glove, right? So there's a need to, at the very least, have some late inning defense. And I think Freddie Galvis will help that. He's a switch hitter. You would love to see him come up in some of those pinch hitting appearances later in the games that are otherwise going to rookie Luke Williams or at the moment, Nick Maton is on the bench, right? So uh, so some of those late inning pinch hit at bats would be great. And not to mention, you can plug Freddie Galvis in almost anywhere. So right now, the Phillies don't have Andrew McCutcheon. They don't have Reese Hoskins, both of them on the injured list. Didi Gregorius, of course, uh, hit by that pitch. He's a little banged up playing tonight uh but you know in an instant like that wouldn't it be nice to have somebody like freddie galvis just to plug in wherever and if you remember he's played second base third base shortstop and center field and left field for the Phillies. so so he's somebody you can plug in almost anywhere bill frank we just have one more question again from bill mcmanus who is to blame for all the guys who have failed scouting has to be one who in your opinion deserves all the blame and i would say like in the front office for the Philly scouting department. Where, where are they going wrong? Well, they're, they're gone. Uh, so uh, the two, last two drafts have been done by Brian Barber, the, the Philly's amateur uh, scouting director. Uh, he, he brings a very fresh perspective. He worked for the Yankees for many years. Uh, Barber uh, spent the last two first-round draft picks on, on high school pitchers, something that the previous regime was kind of scared of doing. You know, they were they more you know when you draft high school pitchers you have some years of development ahead of them but you know as we've seen throughout the league a lot of them have turned up really high results in terms of of the output of the players so I would say that uh, so that he's he's given them a couple really promising drafts so far and then on the other side of things you have Josh Bonifay uh, uh, son of former major leader Cam Bonifay do working in that department as well and kind of leading leading the uh, development of the young players. So, um, but Bonifay, he's, he only got hired two years ago. So uh, anybody that there is to blame essentially for, for this lack of development of all these prospects that the Phillies have had, uh, they're all out of here. Uh, new, new general manager slash 
director, of, uh, president of baseball operations, new new scouting director, new minor league director, uh, Josh Bonifay. And, and so far, so good. Uh, you know, they're not going to take somebody that the previous regime drafted and, and work miracles in, in a year or two's time if the development up to that point has been subpar. But um, but I don't think that's anything for Phillies fans to worry about right now because they have turned those positions over. And so far, the results seem like they're pretty good. Just, just real quick, Frank. Um, now, I... My personal opinion is I think the Giants are going to have something to say about who goes to the World Series from the National League. But let's let's just say that the Dodgers put an abrupt halt to this winning streak of the Phillies. Other than this particular matchup, and let's just say it does come to – let's say that the Phillies get swept. Where would the Phillies really need to step up to the plate? In, I, know, I know you're talking about the, the, the series two weeks uh, that, that's left in the, uh, the toward the end of the season, but where would where could you see the Phillies stumbling again, or where would they have to step it up before that season, before that series at the end of the season? You know, they have a few games that are challenging. So the, besides the the Dodgers right now, they do have a series against the Padres, which is the Phillies took two out of three of the Padres last time. That was at home. Uh, so you, you at least mentally you're kind of thinking, okay, I can hang with those guys. And, and you know, the, in terms of the other good opponents, they have a series against the Milwaukee Brewers, which is which is an interesting series. They still have some against the Giants, I believe. So they, they have some. They do have some. Uh, they do have some games that they really need to keep an eye on uh, going forward. But I will say this, you know, I I think it's really easy to just sort of say, okay, well the the, the schedule is what it is. And uh, by the way, excuse me, I meant, I said Giants, I meant Reds. They were the, who I think of the other playoff contender. Um, it, it's very easy to think, okay, well, this team might be better than this team. But at the end of the day, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're facing starters three, four, five uh, against the, the, the Padres and you're coming at them with Zach Wheeler, Kyle Gibson and Aaron Nola, well, then you might say, okay, well, then the, that leans the Phillies, right? And then if you get Zach Eflin back and, and, you go into the next series, which isn't as challenging, well, then you feel a lot better about it. So I think the Phillies will try to play with the rotation the best they can. Uh, Chase Anderson was in that Zach Eflin slot, and he hit the IL, and the Phillies just skipped that spot in the rotation thanks to Monday's off day. So I, I think they're willing to move the rotation around where it benefits them best. So I think they're going to try to do that and try to, try to get some of these matchups right because, you know, looking at, looking at the rest of the schedule, there's not a whole lot to really fear. Uh, Two games against Tampa Bay at home. Tampa's been good, you know. But again, it's only two games. Um, and honestly, like if they're winning most of these series against the lesser teams, you can go one and two against the Dodgers and not sweat it. Now, ideally, if, if they're at home, you want to win two of these games. You want to win today with Aaron Nola, and you want to win tomorrow with Kyle Gibson. But but if you don't, it's not the end of the world. So I think that that's a luxury the Phillies have at the moment with a multiple game lead. And uh, you got to think too that the the holes in the the Braves and there are holes. Uh, they will keep the Braves from dominating their opponents too. So, um, so there will be a little bit of wiggle room, I think, here. Now you want to try to win every day. You don't want to just say, "Well, I'll, I'll get them tomorrow" if you're the Phillies. But, but uh, the, you know, the, there there are some things that could work out in their favor. And and even though some of these games, maybe about ten of them are against solid opponents, they, they you know there's there's no again. There's no way to, to really worry about them, especially if they, if they happen to face Zach Wheeler, of course. Frank, I had one last question for you. Um, I know you didn't got another minute or so. Um, go always win the division? Right now, I tend to think yes. I, I, uh, I, don't, I think the Braves have enough holes. I think the Mets are not going to be part of the conversation anymore. I mean, that's something I really believe. And uh, even though it might go down towards the end, I, I, I do think that that there's sort of a there's been sort of a renewed confidence among this Phillies team, and I think they they have something to prove, and I think they're going to do it because I, I I think they've built a lot of confidence the last few weeks uh, that that they're going to hang in there and they're going to win. Definitely agreed. Um. All right, food. <laughs> Well, forget uh, at uh, don't forget the Twitter handle at Frank Close. Go right. check him out. What is ninety seven point three FM ESPN? And also with Jeff Moser, 
Powder Blue Podcast, and also a website, sportstalkphilly.com. Well, Frank, we want to thank you for coming on, taking your time out tonight. We do appreciate it. And, you know, let's go, Phils, and uh, we'll hope to have you back on soon. <laughs> Come yeah, thank you. Time. Thank you. I'm glad we finally worked out a, a time that worked. Yeah. I know we've been going back and forth, so we do appreciate your time very much. Sur- surprise this guy didn't blame Howie Roseman. <laughs> he, he, just, he just blamed Angel. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, thank you so much, man. Thanks, thank guys. You. Have a wonderful day. Have a good thank night. You. Thank you. Take care. What do you think, Fooge? Philly, Philly's going to Philly's gonna get it done? Yeah, I believe so. How about you, Mr. Pittsburgh Pirates fan? I hey, look, I called, I called the Cardinals and the A's in the World Series. I said the Braves were going to win the National League East. I can't back off of it now, you know, with the Mets collapsing like they are, and the Mets aren't coming back from, from what they're experiencing right now. And I, you know, I had to stick with, said the Braves would win that division. I think I said the Reds would win their division. I think I said the, or no, I said the Cardinals would win that division. Uh, and I think, I think I had the Padres winning the National League West. So, well, it's a three-team race right now between them, the Dodgers, and the Giants. So, you know. It's but I mean, if, if 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 the Giants keep playing like they're playing and they keep this up, they are going to be tough to beat. I don't care what anybody said. And I did not, I did not see any of that coming out of San Francisco at all. Well, especially with Gabe Kapler being named manager. Hey, let's let's talk about. Well, what's this I hearing about? Hertz is struggling in camp a little bit. What's this I'm hearing? I was at the practice the other night. I mean, <laughs> what what are you going to do? You're not going to see much in camp anyway. I mean, it's you know some of these guys are just camp bodies. Two nights away from the first preseason game, and you know, there's there's a lot to be there's a lot to be shown with this football team. I mean, you got a whole new. A lot of new defensive veterans. You know, you still got whether well, Zach Ertz is going to be in camp. I mean, going to be on the <laughs> Eagles to start the season. I mean, you got a bunch of rookies, which I think the Eagles need to go out and sign a, a veteran wide receiver just to groom these guys. I mean, I, they, to me, the running the running game's got a lot of upside with the additions of Jordan Howard, carry on Johnson with Miles Sanders, depending on if Nick Sirianni – Runs a balanced attack. I mean, forget Jeff Lurie and his stupid theories on the damn passing game. How did they win the 2017 Super Bowl? They pounded the damn rock. That's how it was. But Garrett Blunt, Corey Clement, Jay Ajayi, they just pounded off. I mean, there's your your buddy Bill McManus. Diller got hurt today, day to day. Yeah, I believe he hurt his, hurt, sprained his knee today. That's why I hate. I, that's why I hate preseason. You saw what happened to Justin Jefferson yesterday. No, what happened? I yeah, I think it was Justin, Justin Jefferson. I think he twisted his ankle or his knee. He was in pain. He was laying on the ground. I mean, this is why I just – I can't uh, – I never liked preseason football. If you want to have, like, little itty-bitty scrimmages and stuff like that, that's great. But, of course, it's all about the Lira. You know, so I – too many – you think Aaron Rodgers is going to play in the preseason? No. no not at all. It's already been said. Well, let, let's jump into it a little before Jordan comes on. You got three preseason games instead of four now. I'm just I'm just gathering the information. Game two is basically the dress rehearsal for the starters, which will probably play ahead. Now, you already lose that fourth preseason game with an extra regular season game now. How many guys between now and three weeks are going to go down to some type of injury? Exactly. Leading, into, leading into week one, it's basically the month of September. You're playing preseason football. I mean, hey, you look. don't have you don't have the two a day practices anymore. It's you know, it, with the collective bargaining agreement, it's just a joke. If you want to have two preseason games just for the rooks and the backups and everything, that's great. And then if you want to leave the final preseason game for all the starters, make them play, save the third game for all the starters. Make all the starters play the whole damn game. And if you want to mix in a couple of the backups, that's fine. Who you think are really going to contribute, then that's fine. But don't 
play the starters. You don't need if, if the, now you got me started. Two preseason oh, games, two two preseason games for the backups for the second you know, the second string, third string, fourth string. That's great. Final preseason game, all starters, all the way through. You, you, you think the guys who are really going to contribute that, that are going to be second string or even third string, plug them in with the starters at some point or whatnot, see how they perform, you know, with the starting 22, and then you take it from there. But I just – you're going to – there are too many people that get hurt. You know, baseball is different with their exhibition season. Do guys still get hurt and stuff like that? Yeah, but they – you know, it's not like they're playing like – full exhibition games like every freaking day you know what i mean and then like the nhl is a little bit different and then basketball is a little bit different football is a whole different beast man it's just a whole different and even then now you got 17 games and three preseason games and then you got the playoffs that's a lot of taxing on the body man that's just a lot of taxing on the body that's mm-hmm. it's, it's it's you're talking july mini camp all the way to February, if you make it. That's five, six. That's six and a half months of beating the hell out of one another. Well, take COVID out of the co- out of the equation, the OTAs, the mini camps leading up to training camp. And Bill McManus has a question. How about when the Rams coach said Stafford will not play as long as he is coached? <sighs> I'm not exactly sure I understand the question. To be quite honest with you, is that can you reiterate on that, Bill? That's Sean McVay who said that. How about what Rams coach said? Stafford will not play as long as he is coach. Oh, as long as he is coach. Okay. Um, I I don't know. I I have no idea. And look, even even with Stafford, look at what happened to him like a week, week and a half ago. You know, you come through on a pass, clank. You hurt your thumb and whatnot. So, I don't know, man. I don't know. I just pre- – preseason has always been a big sticking point with me. I just never liked it. I don't think it – it serves a purpose for whoever – you, you already know who's going to make the team and who's going to start. Oh, I think for, for me, preseason has always served a purpose. Let's take a look at all these players – to get it to a 53-man roster. Because you already know what the bulk of your team is going to be. So, like I said, two preseason games, backups, people trying to make the team, and then that third preseason game, all-out starters, first quarter to the fourth quarter, and just just let them hammer it out. Uh, We want to touch on uh, our great sponsors, uh, Gooses, first of all, I'd like to thank Gooses, Monte Cristo Lounge out there. Limerick will be out there in a couple weeks. We'll be out there at the start of the Eagle season on September 12th. Angel, Nick, myself, Ryan, we'd like to thank Tampa Joe's. Also, we'd like to thank LG Direct Studios also. And also, we'd like to uh, give a shout-out to uh, our special partnership with Big Sarge. You can hit Big Sarge up on BigSarge.com. Actually, he's there on uh, Sport, Sports Talk 790 in Houston. He's on there called In the Trenches with MD Khalil, X Eagle. Very nice guy. Um, tune in to Big Swords. Check out his website. And Big Swords will be on probably within a couple of weeks when the Dale, when Dallas comes to, when the Eagles go to Dallas. Let me correct myself. <laughs> You're all you're all you're all flustered now because we're only what what some five weeks away from from the start of the NFL and there is only I believe let's see let's see I'm my off. birthday is the 28th so what do we got like maybe 17 days 18 days till college football yes sir Bo has a question we can treat these guys like statues that's why we, that's why September wait. We cannot treat these guys like statues. That's why September guys go down because training camp has changed. I, well, I mean, it has, it, it has changed. It just, I mean, it, it has changed. I mean, you can, you can get it hurt at any point of the season. I understand it. But 
it's it's almost like the NBA now. It's like if why don't you do just and you know it's going to happen during the season because we talked about it months ago with the seventeenth game. I'll guarantee you, if let's say the Chiefs are thirteen and one, and their next closest opponent is record is I don't know ten and four, and they've got a three game lead on somebody for home field advantage. I will guarantee you that if they're playing somebody crappy that particular week, they're going to sit some of their starters just to rest them. And that's just the way it's going to go down. And I'm sure the NFL is going to try and keep tabs on it because there's a whole lot of stuff that comes into play, (laughs) you know, when you, when you start doing stuff like that. So, and I, I already know it's coming food. It's, you know, it's, it's, what, what would you do, Foods? Let's say, you know, it just just hypothetically, let's say the Eagles are, I don't know, let's say they're 11-3, and three, and the next closest record for home field advantage to the Eagles division-wise is, oh, I don't know, let's say they're, it's 8-6, and six, and you've got a three-game lead on the next division, you know, the, the leading division uh, team at the time, and let's say the Eagles are playing somebody that are abysmal. Would you sit your starters for a week or sit them for a half just to get them some rest? In week 17? Not 17 at any point. That's what I'm it's saying. Just, you know, let's say, like, let's, I mean, yeah. it, it just depends because the game could be crucial. I mean, you could, you could need that game to win the division going down the stretch. Ducky, had a, hey, Doc, how you doing? It's got a question. What do you think about the opening practice on Sunday night? You know, I saw, I mean, her, Jalen Hurts did look good at some points and other points. No, I mean, Zach Hurts had a nice touchdown in the end zone. Quez Lock, Lockins looked great, which I think he's going to make the team. But as Brian Dawkins always said, anybody can look good in practice, but it's where in the game is where it counts. Thursday night, when all these guys, 90 guys, step on the field, we'll see who wants the job and who doesn't. See all the camp bodies get caught game three, week three preseason. We'll see who wants to make the team, who's got the heart and fire to make it in the NFL because a lot of these guys will be going home getting packed or being on the practice squad. Uji, let me ask you this about your Eagles. What's up? Let's say the Eagles start off one and three. Do you think that Deshaun Watson trade talks are going to start to ramp up even more? There's still speculation and rumors that, you know, I'm seeing articles that, you know, Deshaun Watson could be an Eagle. I mean, whether it's Miami Dolphins or the Eagles, they had to do their due diligence to, you know, from a legal standpoint. I mean, why would all these rumors just be coming out? I mean, it could be, you know, Sell papers, internet, whatever, Twitter, all these uh, handles with social media. I mean, right now, to me, uh, 22 accusation, accusations, it's it's a, it's a fire starter. And like I said, last week, the Eagles have six female executives in the front office, the most in the NFL now. What does that tell you? What does that tell an Eagles fan base? What does that tell any fan base? Like, does Jeff Lurie care more about winning, or is it, you know, you got you got to think about what's out there. I mean, right now you got to give Jalen Hurts a full season. That's the only thing I could say. A full year. I mean, hey, you revisited Deshaun Watson if he's available within. The next season, and also they said there were media reports that said Houston wasn't taking calls. It was just all hearsay. So it's it's a fire starter. Would I love him as a player? Yes, but with all the with all the rumors and what have you, not really because it's just going to probably just start a fire here in Philly. And you know, Philadelphia love Philadelphia media like. Craves this stuff just to suck it up. Hey, think about what Hurts has been through already, to be quite honest with you. He had to deal with what happened at the end of last year. 
then during the draft, he had to hear about that the Eagles, and I know it was clarified, but the rumors were out there that the Eagles tried to get up to get Zach Wilson. So he had to deal with that. And now he's got to deal with the whole Deshaun Watson stuff. Oh. I mean, just, just, just get off. Just, just let, like you said, Fuji, let the kid play a full season, oh, see, what he, see what he's got, and yeah. see, just take it from there. That's the only way you're going to see what you got with Jalen Hurts. I mean, you know, they talk about this quarterback competition. You bring Joe Flacco in, which I'm not. The guy's a statue to me. You know what? I think I could see Nick Mullins being now Joe Flacco number two. Why not? He's got he's younger. He's got a lot more upside. He's got some heart. You know, he didn't play bad last year filling in for Garoppolo. It's a question for Bill McManus. He's here and the defense is looking better than the offense. The offense is not looking good at all. Well, I mean, you got a veteran presence, you know, with all the guys they brought in, like Anthony Harris, Steve Nelson, you know, BG up front, Fletcher Cox, Josh Sweat, Derek Barnett. I mean, I think these guys are hungry. Eric Wilson, a linebacker. You know, the defense wants to prove something this year. I think Jonathan Quinn's going to have him playing a better and a different defense than Jim Schwartz do with that bend and break stuff. So, rock paper you know, scissors. Let's, <laughs> well, let's see what Nick Sirianni. I'm excited about Nick Sirianni. I, you know, you got to give the guy a chance. I mean, who the hell knew what Andy, who Andy Reid was 20 years ago? Not nobody. Andy Reid to Nick Sirianni, but. Andy Reid took the playbook out, out of the trash from Mike Holmgren. I mean, he was the quarterback's coach for Green Bay, for God's sake. You never know. What could be a diamond in the rough or he'll be gone in two to three years. Just hopefully we're not like the <coughs> rounds bringing in coaches year after year. Tom Fogarty, it's up. Tom Tom says he hears Philip Rivers once back in the NFL. He's first not – First, not first I'm hearing about it. But you never know. I mean, with the whole Carson Wentz debacle, they yeah. could reach out. What they, who knows? Maybe just like that stupid rumor that came out last week saying that Andrew Luck wanted yeah. to hold the Colts about coming Dude, back. Philip Rivers is not coming back. The only the only way Philip Rivers is coming back is if somebody is in like they're down to like their four string quarterback or something like that, and somebody really needs. Like really needs a veteran quarterback, but the guy he can't really throw the football. You see him try to throw the football last year. Did, did anybody try and see him throw the football last year? It just he's got that shot put release where he brings it back and he shot puts it. Earlier in his career, it worked to it worked to a charm, but now it just he's not coming back. He's got to, oh. Phil. Phil, listen to me. Stay at home. <laughs> spend your money. Go on vacations. Hang out with the family, enjoy your time. No, he's don't, sure. don't, don't, don't try and come back. I'm sure he's enjoying his retirement with his nine or twelve kids. And take, that. take, take Andrew Luck's advice. You know, what I mean, you, everybody thinks Andrew Luck's coming back. I got news for you. Andrew Luck is never coming back. <laughs> hey, how well, about we, your boy? How, how about your boy Howard Carmichael? By the way. Well, yeah. Let's give kudos and a shout out to uh, twenty. 21 Hall of Famer, Harold Carmichael, congratulations. Jeff Lurie, by the way, retire number 17 already. It's already <laughs> been going throughout Sean Jeffrey, Nelson Aguilar, whoever else were. Retire Harold's jersey. He's in the Hall of Fame. It's been long overdue. How we get in touch with Jeff and tell him? <laughs> who, I mean, the, guy who, had, who? the guy had a phenomenal career. So greatest Eagles wide receiver in history. Who was more integral to that team, Wilbert Montgomery or Harold Carmichael? Well, see, here's the thing. <laughs> Harold, you never hear nothing about Wilbert Montgomery. It's always Shady McCoy, maybe Deuce Staley, Brian Westbrook. Rick I remember. Rivers. I remember Wilbert. Wilbert Montgomery doesn't. Dick Vermeil pounded Wilbert Montgomery into the ground. I mean, no wonder the guy's knees were shot. And he was traded to Detroit for Gary Cobb like four, five years later. I mean, they ran him into the ground. He was done. I mean, I don't I don't think Wilbur Montgomery gets his due diligence as a player. You never hear nothing about the poor man. 
Hey, Fuji, I want to pick your brain about um, – I know you're not, like, the biggest NBA guy in the world, but <clears> – I was a long time. What do you think about all these max contracts, brother? Oh, the Lakers are definitely uh, rolling out the old heads, you know, to win a championship. But – and the Jordan era wouldn't have happened, but I don't want to get into that because I get fired up and – I could sit here all night and talk about the '80s and '90s, the greatest years of the. Hey man, look basketball. If if the owners are going to offer it to them, take it. Who wouldn't freaking take it? You know what I mean? Who yeah, wouldn't man. take? It? Yeah, but to me, it's like the difference between Jordan and LeBron. LeBron had to go to several other cities to win titles. Jordan had Scotty, and when towards the end, the last three, they had Dennis Rodman. But that was a dynasty. They probably could have won three to five more. Maybe three. I don't want to get two. So Angel says, food says, Howie <laughs> Roseman should be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah, maybe as a janitor. Is Jeffrey, Lurie, is Jeffrey Lurie a Hall of Fame owner? Why do you got to start? Yeah, I'm, I'm, hey, man. I'm just – you're, 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 you're the Philly. You're, you're the He's Philly. Oh, Clint. Stop. Time out. He's not Time Jerry out. Jones. Time out. Let's not talk about him. Why not? No, I don't want to heard, talk about I him. I had nerve, didn't I? I'm tired of talking about him. Why? I'm tired of talk- That's your boy. Tired of talking to him. Can't do it. Won't do it. You know what? He can't, needs- can't, 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 hey, look. Can't win with him. Don't Hold want him. He needs another facelift. He needs Please. another facelift. More offensive. Yeah. Plastic, plastic face. Mr. Fogarty, I'm tired of hearing about that, too. Oh, don't the whole, get me started. Byron spent years with this guy, shooting jump shots in practice. This guy just needs to be ran out of Philly, driven to the airport, go to L.A. in your $17.5 million mansion, live there, play for the Lakers, play for the Clippers, take care. I don't even want to bring up Bum Simmons' name. Throw that down the damn toilet. It's over. Kaput, he hasn't returned. JoJo's calls, nobody. Take care of Ben. I'm not getting into Ben Simmons. It's a disgrace. This guy can shoot jumpers, but he can't step up in the damn playoffs because he's a Tim man. He has no heart. Hell of a phenomenal player defensively, but the man choked. You're a choke <laughs> artist, Ben. Get some heart. Yeah, Go see the wizard and get some heart, my man. Take your game elsewhere and you'll probably win five times. Once you leave Philly. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm like just. Fuji and I approve the message. Don't ask any questions about Bum Simmons because I'm done and over with that saga. You can flush it down the toilet, turn a page, do whatever the hell you want with it because I'm hey. sick of hearing about Ben Simmons. What do you think about uh, Flyers signing Carter Hart? I needed to be done. I mean, you know, it's like he had a bad year. I mean, they picked up some defensive guys, and <laughs> why do you why, why, why? Come, I'm just trying. I'm just trying to get you to calm down just a little bit. No, I'm fine. My rant's over. <laughs> now I'm, I'm 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 in my element now. Even though I'm I'm hosting. Thank you for <laughs> co-hosting the show, and thank you to you and Angel for getting me through this. <laughs> um, I mean, I think you just wanted to. Start of the pot, but <laughs> a lot phenomenal talent, but like I said, phenomenal talent, but no heart. You have all the hey. talent in the world. Oh, well, you know what? By the way, I'm not having a show on Thursday, folks, just to let you know. Bill McMahon says the Rams have come, Rams have come in vengeance at the park, no score in the bottom of the fourth. As I do have it on behind me. Well, you say the Braves will win the division. Braves win the division, my friend. That sounds like a bet, my man. I'm going to take whatever, it whatever, whatever, hey, whatever, whatever the bet is. I'll whatever bet you, you a hair. I'll bet you a haircut. That's about twenty-five bucks. <laughs> For you. Oh, you don't. Well, you cut your. Own. Well, see, I get my hair cut in two weeks. <laughs> wow, wow. Hey. Let me ask you something about the NFL real quick. Let's see. Marlins, 
Angel says Marlins come back to win a division. Ha ha ha. Oh, it's not even get on the floor to <laughs> So with the seventeen game and I don't know how the viewers feel about overtime. This whole thing about well you kick a field goal and the other team can kick a field goal and then it just keeps going, but you know, if the other team scores a touchdown, then it's over. Look, man, you know what I think they should do at overtime? And I know I'll get pushed back for it because I just got done saying about people getting hurt and stuff like that. I've always been a big proponent from all the way, 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 way back. They should just play an extra quarter. And whatever the score winds up at the end of the fifth the fifth in overtime, that's, that's it. So you go into overtime and it's 24-24. Someone wins 38-24. You know, you, know, you know why I say that, Fuji, is because for four quarters, you battle, you spit, you bleed, you're hurting, you're out of gas, you're out of breath. But then, oh, yeah, well, if the team that gets the ball first scores a touchdown, the game's over. Or if the field goal kicker kicks a field goal, then the other team gets it. And if they kick a field goal, then the game keeps going. Well, I'm sorry. Why not just let the fifth quarter why not, why not just let overtime go until the end of overtime? And then where we stand after that, there you have it. Uh, you know what? I, I do kind of agree with that because how's a team when the coin toss, you score, drive down the field, the game's over. You don't even give the other team yeah. a chance to come back. But these rule changes every year, it's always something. It doesn't that doesn't that aggravate you like at the end of a game where all these guys battle and battle and battle and then it comes down to your field goal kicker? He's the one that's gotta decide it. Hey, it's always how you've been to play American football, but all these rule changes are a joke. I mean you might as well just make a flag football because you can't hit anybody. You can't hit nope. the quarterback. God forbid you knock Tom Brady in the five orbits from here. And, you know, whoever it is. I mean, I've, see, the, the concussions, yes. I mean, I mean, the game back in the day when they would break bones is. Well, first uh, off, NFL referees should have pilot's vision, number one. They should have 2010 vision. They should have eye tests like every couple months. That's number one. Number two, get rid of all the rules. The only way, if I'm a referee, the only way I'm going to call a penalty is it would have to be so egregious that you have to call it. But the way they make it, and I get about concussions and guys are faster and they're stronger and they're this, that, I get it. But it's football. Like when we played football way back in the day, those are the risks you took. I still hurt like Cal sometimes. My shoulder shot from football. My knee shot from football. But guess what? That's the risk that you take when you play sports. Now, do guys get dirty? Absolutely. Again, if it's so egregious that you have to call it, then I would call it. But you you could go by a quarterback and pass wind, and it's a, yeah, there goes the yellow flag. Oh, you, or you, bump, you can't. You bump the quarterback today and you get a 15-yard flag. Like, what the yeah. hell? It's a joke. <laughs> You get or, within ten. You get within ten feet of Tom Brady, and you look at him the wrong way. There goes the flag. Even if you breathe on the guy, even if you breathe on it, him or Rod, and even Rogers doesn't sometimes even get the calls that Brady does. It's few and far between. Go, you know, no, and I won't bring oh. it up. But go, go back and take a look at the Super Bowl. Nah, you, that's why Brady. No, 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 no. You go. Go go back and take a look at the, some of the, some of the games that Brady's played in, you know. And I was oh, happy no. that, you know, and they've they've changed. Well, the talk rules where it all started with Brady. <laughs> Raiders against the Patriots, two thousand. If that two play, game. if that play doesn't happen, the Patriots aren't going to the Super Bowl that year. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> they're not, and that's the sad part about everything. That's where the the dynasty started, I guess. Did you ever see that on NFL Network, the timeline about that? Yeah. Pretty interesting when they break that down. Chucky and Charles Woodson and yep. Bella Cheater and some of those it other just, jokers. <laughs> just like when the Dolphins played the the Patriots. And here come the snowblower. 
<laughs> what year was was it in the mid nineties? <laughs> No, I'm talking like way, 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 way back. Before my time. Must you must be old. I am old. So I said Cardinals A's, but the way the Giants are playing, um, we got about five minutes here. But the way the Giants are playing in the National League, I don't know, man. And then as far as the American League goes right now, the Red Sox have tailed off. The Yankees have gotten hot. The Rays are sort of like in between. Well, I'll tell you what, man. Right now, Chicago White Sox are looking tough. Tony LaRusso. I don't know how, the, I don't know how he's it. managing at his age, but God bless him. Say what you want to about the man, but the man can. Hey, the man's a winner. How many World yep. Series has he won? They're looking. I don't know. He's won with the Cardinals. It's one, um, one with the A's. Yeah. He's got at least half. I mean, Joe Torre has what four? Larusa's got to have three or four. Torre's got more than that. Does Torre have more than four? What did they win? Five or six? That's a good question. Bill McManus, 80, 84. Was that uh, <laughs> the snowblower game? <laughs> Which I remember um, it. I, I, remember was all, it. I was all by ten years. <laughs> so. It will be what do you what do you what do you what do you what are you thinking about your Eagles opener, man? What against the uh, Falcons? Not going to be easy. No, I think the Eagles win. I mean, I'm not. I'm not a uh, fan of Matty Ice. He's a choke artist. No Julio. Uh, eh, but they still have a good receiving core. I, that that game will, you know, Atlanta's defense is a sieve, <laughs> you know. So that I would say, if you're gonna bet for entertainment purposes only, by the way, if you're gonna bet, I would highly take a look at the over under of the Eagles Falcons game. Why <laughs> for entertainment? Eagles bet in Pennsylvania <laughs> by most states. Is that, that 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 Not game might casino, be? casino, you can drop whatever you want to put. Put a million dollars on it. Bet you the over. I'll bet you the over under for that game is like sixty one. I could see that game. I could see that game being like a thirty three to thirty one game or somewhere in there. Let's let's call Vegas Vic. <laughs> see what he says. Hey, you get go go look at some of the opening games, man. Bill They're McManus tough. Says Falcons shock the Eagles nation. <laughs> the birds against the birds. Hey, and by the way, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna go watch a football game anywhere opening weekend, where can they get a good cigar? Wanna go wanna go to Goose's Monte Cristo and Lounge <laughs> down in Limerick, Pennsylvania, where we will be week one and within I believe August 29th we'll be there. So everybody anybody needs cigar, birthday coming up, holidays around the corner. Go check out Gooses. My and where Crystal can, Lounge in Limerick, Pennsylvania. And where can you go in Tampa to watch a good football game? Tampa Joe's Restaurant and Sports Bar. I don't know the address, but Tampa Joe's where Philly of the South, the founder Mike Klein has been was the founder for over 25 years. Go meet Mike and the crew down there. Tampa's original Philly of the South, Philadelphia Eagles fan club. Phillyofthesouth.com, Mike Klein, go to Tampa Joe's. We'll take care of it during every Eagles game. Also, uh, go ahead. LG Connect Studios, Larry Gilman. Want to get in touch with Larry? He's in the Philadelphia and Tampa area, 855 777 3863. Give Larry a call and he'll hook you up. And let's not right. forget. Uh, Let's not forget Big Swords, BigSwords.com, who will be probably on the pregame when we play Dallas within a couple weeks. Him and I will probably be bickering about that Eagles-Cowboys rivalry and get, get me fired up and everybody else. <laughs> Check out BigSwords.com, who we have a special partnership with here on Broad Street Sale. So, hey, you want to close it out, buddy. 
So we want to thank everybody for coming on tonight. Frank Close, appreciate you coming on. We'd like to have you on again. Check out the website at broadstreetsouth.com. Check out our clothing line there. We're on there now. How's everybody doing? We've got <laughs> our 72 episodes on there. Check out Nick Lisi's. Check out Nick Lisi's. You want to say you want to say columns? Is is that a column? I can't even talk. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I'm new to this. Bear with me. <laughs> Check out the clothing line. We got everything from hoodies, stretch pants, uh, <laughs> fanny packs for you folks, <laughs> and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, right. again, we'd like to thank Frank Close. Check out his Twitter handle again, Powder Blue Podcast, with uh, Jeff Mosher. Also, SportsTalkPhilly.com. Hit him up. Check him out. Well, Ryan, I'd like to thank you for co- you and Angel for coaching me through this. I'm a little, still a little tongue tied. <laughs> Got me fired up. Thanks to that general manager that I can't thank train. you. Thank you. And, and it's and it's glad to be, and I'm glad to be with you tonight, as you would say. <laughs> glad anyway, to be with you folks, too, buddy. Anyway, folks, no show Thursday. We will see you next Tuesday. Everybody have a good week. Check out two days, Steelers, Eagles. Check out the birds, Nick Sirianni, Jalen Hurts. The hour begins. Everybody have a good week, and thank you for tuning in. Good night and God bless, and everybody have a good week. 